In this short course, I will explain what personas are and how you can use them. I'm Guido Stomf, professor at Inholland University of Applied Sciences. Now to start uh, with, what is actually a persona? Now, a persona is a not really existing person you designed, an archetype. And the very essence of it is, is that it looks like a real person, uh, someone you can like and you understand a bit, and uh, has a face so that you know for whom you are designing. And it helps you to get focus, to know about what kind of product features are needed or uh, what kind of uh, uh, interactions people would like to have or what would be usable for that person and so on. An example explains much more than any definition and uh, this is one persona. This is, uh, hi, let's meet Jack Rowland and he is uh, 32 years old and uh, it's a man of course and uh, he's working in ICT industries and he has quite some experience. He likes uh, specific brands. He has a kind of personality is not so uh, he's quite extrovert and not so introvert and we can go on like this the thing is jack roland does not exist it's a persona he's been designed and he represents a larger user group now the question is why would you choose to design a persona rather than for instance just describe the target group well, there's a big difference between a target group, which is just an abstract description of a group of people, like male between 13 and 45 years old, working in ICT industries, and at the other hand, a persona, which is basically a face and a name representing that specific target group. But once we say it's Jack Rowland, he's 32 years old, he's an ICT engineer, he has one child, he lost to Skeeler, we know much more about him, we understand him better, and we can empathize with him. And that gives you a couple of specific advantages that uh, target groups don't have. Most of all, it enables you to empathize. You understand for whom you are designing. You can, you can actually drink a beer almost with him or with her. And it helps you to get focus in your team, to focus on what matters, not, what kind of features are needed and what not, what is most important to highlight and what is not, and so on. Yes, it's just one name, it's just one face, but by designing for this archetype, you can satisfy the broader group of people represented by that specific archetype. When designing a persona, there are a couple of ingredients that should be in there. There are actually more things you can add to it, but at least these things should be in there. You need a name, a real name, eh, someone you could know. You need a face that looks quite like a real person you could actually meet. And you need a bio, which explains a bit like what age, what kind of experience, what working experience, whether they're married or not, if they have children and th stuff like that, so that you understand what kind of person it is. Then you need his or hers motivations. What makes them tick? What are their needs? What are their goals in life? What are the goals with the products and service that you are designing? And that's quite important as well, that you really explicit, explicitate what the relation is to the thing that you're designing. Is it something that's important to them or is it not so important to them? Do they use similar things already? And why and for what situation and things like that. Now, and also very important is to describe a bit the knowledge like the, the, the education that they did and the experience they have, for instance, with technology. If you, for, in, for example, design something like a new software application, you should describe what kind of experience people have already with other software applications. So what kind of applications is the persona using? Now we know what we need to put into a persona. How do we create a persona? The most important thing that very often is forgotten in a way is that before you make a persona, you have to gather a lot of empirical data. You have to do some desktop research, you have to interview some people, you have to observe people. And on the base of that empirical data, then we can construct a persona. So once we have that data, we can have a workshop. Don't do it on your own, do it together with a team or with some people that you uh, know and Let's do a workshop. And the first thing you do is you're going to identify different user categories, groups. Brainstorm and try to see what they may need. Once you have a couple of those groups, you're going to create skeletons. 
a skeleton is an outline of a user representing that, uh, that group. So it could be, for instance, a teenager at a secondary school who became just aware of pop music and is very interested in lifestyles and what it means to him or her. That's a skeleton. It's just a raw outline of almost a real person. Once you have these skeletons, you have to give life to the skeleton. You have to make it a real person. And actually, this is the more poetic part of constructing personas. You have to freewheel a little bit to make sure that it becomes a real person. Giving him or her a name, try to find a really nice photo that would be someone that you could actually meet and is representing your group. Give him or her some uh, motivations uh, in life, what, what they think is important, some hobbies, uh, some contacts, like, like do they have a friend or are they married or do they have children, stuff like that. This and makes a skeleton a real person. You add life, you add a body to the skeleton. Now, we're not just designing a persona, we're designing for a specific product a specific service so we also have to add aspects that make a relation between the persona and the product you're developing details that matter once you have all this make a nice photo make a nice poster out of it make sure that it's really well captured what you think this is the persona representing the target group and then you do a check and review with others do you know people like this is this someone for whom we are designing is it correct my assumptions that I show you. In this review, you probably get a thousand tips that you need to integrate, but it makes your persona better. Now, very often there is a distinction made between primary personas and secondary personas. Primary personas are the people who are actually using the product or service you are developing. For instance, if you are designing something for students, like, like a website or a Moodle environment or something else, you need to know who the students will be. So you give it a name and a face. You make a persona for of the students you're designing for. What happens is that when you take a look at students, uh, just as an example, you will immediately sense that there is a difference between undergraduate students and, for instance, and master students, or between students who are studying languages and students who are uh, studying engineering. So in a way, you kind of feel that maybe you need multiple primary personas. It's well possible that you really need it. But I always say, refrain yourself. If it is possible to stick to one or two personas, it will help you in your design process later in time much more than when you have 10 different personas, all with small distinctions and different needs that are just, in a way, making it harder for you to design. Now, as I said, next to primary personas, there are also secondary personas who are not the users per se themselves, but more people who have a relation to these users. For instance, if we talk about students, we could talk about instructors, teachers, who also use the same kind of uh, websites or apps as the students, but not basically as a user like the students, but using it in their classrooms. It's important that we also keep in mind who these persons are and what they have in uh, what, what their needs are and what their aims are because they shape what is needed for the product just like what the needs are for the of the primary persona so you have to keep these per people in mind as well throughout the entire project the funny thing with making personas is that many people think that the outcome the persona itself is the really important deliverable but actually what I learned throughout the years is that actually the making of personas is what matters. If you have a team and you have to design something together for specific users or regardless whether a primary or secondary uh, personas, it is the process of having these discussions like for whom are we designing? What kind of person is it? What are his needs? What are his tics? What makes him characteristic? By having these kind of discussions, the team gets focus. You, in a way, align your image. You get a shared image of, 
for whom you are designing. And that is what matters, the making of personas. Since personas were developed around 1999 uh, for ICT industries, they became very popular. And nowadays they're used in many more ways than just for software applications. For instance, they're used in marketing or they're used for product design or for service design. But as often happens with things that became popular, they become a hype and a lot of pitfalls arise. And let me name few around personas so that you're aware of these. The biggest pitfall I encountered, and I encountered it quite often, is that we don't build real people, but we actually build cliche people. And this happens when you don't do research up front. If you don't have interviews, if you're just gonna start doing making personas, you get cliches. Because what you do is you just explicate your assumptions. When we're designing for doctors, we immediately have in mind these people in white coats with a stethoscope around their neck. Or go to a hospital and be amazed that not everyone is a white man with a stethoscope around his neck when he is a doctor. So without research, personas become cliches. Another pitfall that I saw quite often is that we construct fake personas. And what I mean with that is they're too beautiful, too nice, too kind, too gentle, uh, have great motivations to do to change the world, for instance, to make it a better place and stuff like that. Well, maybe these people exist. The thing is, I don't know them. What happens is that once people we give personas mood swings, characteristics like uh, they can have a bad temper, give them pimples or uh, other things that make them much more like you and I, like normal everyday people, you can empathize with them. And that's precisely what is needed with a persona. You need to empathize with them. You need, it need to be persons that you can actually meet, not those fake persons that you would meet on Instagram. I was discussing pitfalls, but there are actually very good reasons why they became so popular as well. Let me reflect on that a bit. The most important thing is that a persona compared to a target group offers much more guidance in the design process. Whether you're designing for Jack Rowland, who's 32 years old, or you're designing for a target group of ICT professionals, probably between 30 and 45 years, it makes a hell of a difference. If you can empathize, you know what kind of things matters and how to optimize your design. The second thing which is really good about personas is they're very easily communicated. You can stick them to the wall, you can invite people and you can say, this is Jack Rowland, this is our persona, this is for whom we are designing. And they, people understand that, they can recognize this person if it's a good persona and they can have discussion. And that's, that's, that's genuinely helping projects. The third thing is neither an advantage nor a disadvantage, but the Constructing a persona takes time. You need to do re research. You need to construct several personas, like primary and secondary personas, and in, in time to decide who is the most important one. It takes time. You need to reflect and stuff like that. Many people just construct a persona in an afternoon, and then you get cliches, and that's the biggest pitfall. If you don't do it, if you do it the right way, it's genuinely a great tool, but be aware that takes time. Thank you very much for your time and I hope to get to see you in another course as well.